Safety Cam Curl is now in control of his own fate, and that means that the Washington Commanders may need to bring in a completely new defensive backfield from what we saw for most of last season. That and more on today's episode of Locked On Commanders. Your daily podcast on the Washington Commanders. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. And welcome into this episode of Locked On Commanders, your daily podcast covering the Washington Commanders, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks so much for making Locked On Commanders your first listen of the day every day. Don't forget that you can subscribe for free on YouTube or wherever you're listening to this podcast. And you can continue this conversation with me by becoming a Locked On Commanders insider. Just go to joinsubtext.com slash Locked On Commanders and sign up today to be an insider. From there, you will get news, analysis, and one-on-one conversations with me via text message. You'll also get bonus content, all kinds of fun stuff going on there. So become a Locked On Commanders insider. Go to joinsubtext.com slash Locked On Commanders today. I am David Harrison, credential member of the media covering the Washington Commanders for CommanderCountry.com, a part of Sports Illustrated's Fan Nation. I'm here with you every Monday through Friday, along with our everydayers and everydayers. As always, I appreciate your continued support for the show. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use the code Locked On for twenty dollars off your first purchase. On today's episode, we are diving into the Commander secondary ahead of free agency beginning next week. But first. We're going to talk about one specific player of the, from the secondary group before we get into the rest of them, and that is Cameron Curl. Safety, uh, Adam Peters said during the NFL scouting combine that he and the, and the team and Cameron Curl's representatives have been in talks on a contract extension. They did not reach that contract extension, and then the deadline to tag uh, players went by Tuesday afternoon, and no news of Cameron Curl getting a transition tag, a franchise tag. Nothing. So that means that as we sit here on Wednesday night recording this episode, talking about Thursday, uh, Cameron Curl has the opportunity to become an unrestricted free agent for the first time in his career if he so chooses. Now, you assume that if Adam Peters in the Washington Commanders front office has been talking to Cam Curl's people, that there is an offer on the table of some sort of or way or form. Uh, and it's up to Cam Curl to either accept that that offer or not. And truthfully, unless the Washington Commanders are doing something like, uh, you know, holding up some kind of of, of preemptive or uh, uh, ultimatum that Cam Curl either takes their offer by X amount of day or, or time uh, or they're going to pull it off the table. Cam really has no reason not to go out there and see what is available for him on the open market. Now, at the same time, the Washington Commanders also have the, due, have the, the, the responsibility to do their due diligence and talk to other candidates that they might be interested in bringing in as well. Uh, and of course, you know, behind the scenes, it could just be a factor that the Washington Commanders' new regime uh, doesn't see a fit for Cameron Curl or doesn't see, uh, you know, a future that, you know, at least the one that Cameron Curl agrees with. Now, uh, for what it's worth, on the Pro Football Focus list of free agent safeties, Cameron Curl is the number three free agent safety on their list entering the offseason. Now, this list was done before franchise tags were placed. So, uh, number one overall free safety or safety in this year's class was Antoine Winfield Jr. of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. He has been franchise tagged, so he is not going anywhere. And the number two free agent on this list was Kyle Duggar of the New England Patriots, who has been transition tagged, which means that the New England Patriots have the opportunity to keep him if they so choose. But Kyle Duggar will be able to go out and seek a new deal and most likely will end up back in New England. Um, So that means your top two safeties on PFF's own list are pretty much off the board, which makes Cameron Curl your top guys, right? So Cameron Curl entering, according to PFF, entering next week as the number one safety in the class. Uh, PFF also projects Cam Curl to be similar or to reach a contract or have a similar grade, similar performance coming out of 2023 as safety Rodney McLeod did when he became a free agent in 2016. Now in 2016, McLeod signed a five-year deal with the Philadelphia Eagles worth $35 million, $7 million annual uh, per or seven million dollars annual per year with thirteen million dollars guaranteed. At the time, that was about fifty six percent of the highest annual per year contract agreed to in that season, which was Tyron Matthew, uh, who agreed with the uh, who agreed to a new contract that season. So, using that math and today's highest APY being sixteen million dollars, which is Jesse Bates of the Atlanta Falcons, that would equate to about eight point nine six million dollars annual for Cameron Curl. So, over five years, we're talking forty four point eight million dollars. Uh, in his new contract with $16.57 million of it guaranteed. Pretty nice deal. So that deal would come just shy of Tyron Matthews' deal uh, and his current annual percentage or annual 
per year average uh, salary, which is currently with the New Orleans Saints. Now, looking at Matthew the year before he signed that deal with the Saints and Cam Curl's uh, season last year, Matthew did do better than Cam Curl in the interception department. Matthew had three. Curl had none. Uh, they matched in sacks. Had he, Tyron Matthew had 14 fewer solo tackles than Cam Curl. One less forced fumble, but he had two more fumble recoveries. So pretty even overall outside of the interceptions, which means that a good amount of the non-guaranteed money that Cam Curl gets on his next deal might be tied to interceptions specifically uh, as his team tries to motivate him to get more of those. Matthew also made the Pro Bowl the year before he signed that deal. Uh, obviously, Cameron Curl did not. So currently, PFF, again, has a projection for free agent defenders, and they project Cam Curl to land with the Green Bay Packers this offseason, saying, quote, the Packers need to do something at safety. And here we like the idea of them buying low on a player who is good at everything, but perhaps not great at any one particular thing. Sound familiar? There are shades of the Adrian Amos signing by Green Bay in free agency a few years back, a move that turned out quite well. End quote. Now, what's interesting here about Cam Curl landing with the Green Bay Packers is that PFF also has safety Darnell Savage, who has been with the Packers up until perhaps this offseason, landing with either Washington or the Los Angeles Rams. And Darnell Savage is a player that we profiled ahead of the playoffs, ahead of their playoff win over the Dallas Cowboys as a potential free agent that the Washington Commanders could bring in. And again, the assumption there was if they're bringing in a guy like Darnell Savage, it's probably because they did not re-sign Cameron Curl. Savage is a good coverage player. He's got good experiences, a deep free safety. Uh, he's got good speed, athleticism, all those things. And for me, I think that he would pair nicely with Derek Forrest. He would allow Quan Martin to focus on just being the team's nickel. And I think that would be your starting backfield, Derek Forrest and, and, and Darnell Savage. And then Quan Martin would fall down into the slot in that situation. So certainly not a, not a, not, you know, I know a lot of commanders fans want Cameron Curl. I've enjoyed covering Cameron Curl. I think he's got a good presence in the locker room, certainly an impact player on the field, uh, all of those things. But if the Washington commanders were to move on from Cameron Curl for one reason or another, whether it's they decide that he's not a good fit or he decides that he doesn't like the deal and he gets a better deal elsewhere or, you know, whatever, whatever situations there are. If the Washington commanders were to go after a guy like say Darnell Savage coming off the green Bay out of the green Bay Packers, into free agency this offseason. Uh, certainly not uh, a bad move uh, to go ahead and make, and then you secure the back end of your defense. And, of course, Derek Forrest is coming off of a season where he missed a lot of action, uh, played only five games due to injury, and then missed the rest of the season, leading to Percy Butler getting a lot more action. Uh, and you kind of have a more true safety scenario there where Darnell Savage is more your traditional free safety type of player. Derek Forrest steps into more of the traditional strong safety position. Uh, and when you look at Cam Curl, and this is something that I've said before on the show every day, or you'll likely remember this. When I look at Cam Curl and I look at Derek Forrest, I kind of see similar type players. Both of them are certainly adequate in coverage. Both of them certainly effective in the box. Um, but I do think that Derek Forrest has maybe a little bit more of a, a more of an upside as an in the box safety or a strong safety, if you want to call it that. And Cam Curl, while he does have a good box presence, um, also has the, the coverage presence, but like PFF says there, not a great cover safety, not a great box safety, certainly good at both, but not great at either. I think Derek Forrest has the opportunity to be even better than Cam Curl as a box safety if he can get and stay healthy. And then Darnell Savage again brings in that coverage ability from the Green Bay Packers. So, you know, look, I think that either of those, those avenues, whether Cam Curl does end up coming back, whether it's Darnell Savage, uh, if those are your two options, I think it's the Washington Commanders defense is set up uh, for success in the back end of your defense, either of those paths uh, that you might take. And of course, there are certainly many other paths, free agents, draft picks that the Washington Commanders could uh, go after. We're going to cover that in our preseason preview or offseason preview for the Washington Commanders secondary coming up next on today's episode of Locked On Commanders, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's episode of Locked On Commanders is brought to you by eBay Motors. Passion, drive, and patience. That's what eBay Motors brings, and that's what brings home the winning trophy. It's also what keeps your ride-or-die vehicle alive and running. eBay Motors has everything that you need to maintain your vehicle and even level it up to peak performance. Whether you're looking for a supercharger or exhaust kits, anything you're looking for for speed, power, or style, they've got roof racks, they've got LED headlights to make your car look a little bit smoother. eBay Motors has got you covered from bumper to bumper. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay's guaranteed fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time, or you'll get your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're going to burn rubber, not cash. With all the parts that you need at the prices you want, it's easy to turn your car into the MVP 
and bring home that win. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay guaranteed fit is only available to U.S. customers. Today's episode is also brought to you by Game Time, who says that you shouldn't have to worry when you're going to buy tickets to your next big event. Game Time is the fast and easy way to buy tickets for all your sports, music, comedy, and theater events near you with killer last minute deals, all in prices, views from your seat, and their best price guarantee. Game Time takes the guesswork out of buying tickets. Last minute tickets, flash deals, zone deals. They've got all of those. They've also got a low price guarantee, event cancellation protection, job loss protection, all kinds of stuff. Game Time is the only ticketing app that gives you complete peace of mind with your purchase. Game Time has deals on tickets right up to the start of the event and even after it starts and up to an hour after it starts. It's the place to find last minute seats. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use the promo code locked on for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create your account and redeem the code L O C K E D O N for $20 off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Continuing now with today's episode of Locked On Commanders. Thanks again for making Locked On Commanders your first listen of the day today and every day. Every day is make sure you come back tomorrow. We are going to have another position group preview. We will then have our mailbag on Friday and we will wrap up our position group previews on Monday, the same day that the uh, legal tampering, not legal tampering, the legal, the open negotiation period, that's what it is, with NFL free agents begins. And next week is going to be crazy. So hold on to your seats. Locked On has also launched the first ever national sports 24 7 stream channel on YouTube. Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day with your local experts of Locked On, plus our national shows covering every single league. Go to Locked On Sports Today on YouTube and subscribe to the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel. Diving now into our defensive back preview, offseason preview for the Washington Commanders, and we have to start with the guys who are currently on the roster. When you're looking at the DBs on the 2024 Washington Commanders roster right now, you got about, you got 10 of them. So you have a good amount of guys. Uh, the question that the Washington Bears have to answer is how many of those guys are guys that you think can take you where you need to go? So we'll start here. And this is a money order. So this isn't how much they count against the cap order. Quarterback Emmanuel Forbes, last year's first round draft pick, counts for $3.5 million against the cap this season. Uh, he's got a $12.6 million dead cap number. So if you're talking about trading or releasing him, it ain't going to happen, uh, at least in a trade unless you can get the other team to take all that money, which you're probably not going to get um, anything for him in return if you do that. So he's not going to go somewhere anywhere. I know a lot of people want uh, or talked about potentially uh, getting rid of Emmanuel Forbes. That's not going to happen as far as I'm concerned. Cornerback Benjamin St. Juiced, uh, counts for $3.38 million against the cap. And then safety Derek Forrest, $3.19 million against the cap. Those are your only three defensive backs that count for above the $2 million line. In fact, no other DB counts for even $2 million. All of them are $1.8 million or less including second-year defensive back Quan Martin, uh, safety Percy Butler, cornerback Christian Holmes, cornerback Tariq Castro-Fields, cornerback Caillou Blue Kelly, cornerback D'Angelo Mandel, and cornerback Nick Whiteside. So total on the roster, you got seven cornerbacks, two safeties, and one DB. I call Quan Martin a DB because he could be your nickel. He could be a free safety again. It, and that's, you know, free safety is where he ended the season playing last year. It really just kind of depends on the makeup of the roster and it depends on how this new staff sees him fitting into their scheme. Typically on the active roster, you have an allotment of about seven or eight guys. And if you look at this, Emmanuel Forbes, St. Juice, uh, Forrest, Martin, Butler, pretty much locking down five of those positions. So really you're about two or three DBs away from having your active roster allotment. So that's how many you should look for them to potentially add. But Christian Holmes certainly has flashed and shown potential. Tariq Castro Field certainly has flashed and shown potential. So that's two guys, you know, so when you look at the secondary group, is it your top end group? You don't have, you know, a Tyron Matthew on there or Deron Bland on there or, you know, guys like that, but you certainly have uh, some guys that you can roll with. And yeah, and you just have a couple of pieces that maybe you need to add to add to the group. Current 2024 spending uh, cornerbacks are eating up $11.38 million of salary cap space for 2024. Safeties are taking up $6.1 million. Uh, Danny Johnson, cornerback that was released last year, just to note, uh, it does count for $875,000 against the cap this year in dead cap spending. Uh, current spending rank on cornerbacks, the Washington Commanders are 25th in the league on safeties. They're 24th, so certainly could invest a little bit more money in those position groups. Right now, 
just from the guys that we know are on the roster for 2024, your projected starters, you have Benjamin St. Juice and Emmanuel Forbes as your perimeter cornerbacks. Free safety would be Percy Butler, strong safety, Derek Forrest, and your nickel will be Quan Martin. Although it's potential that if you're not in a sub package, Quan Martin is the free safety. And basically Percy Butler comes in there as free safety in sub packages while Quan uh, shrinks down into the slot. So that's kind of your projected depth chart return candidates uh, for the team currently projected to be free agent safety cam curl again. We just talked about him three years, $36 million, $12 million annual per year, $25 million guaranteed is probably about what it's going to take to get the deal done if he comes back to Washington. Safety Jeremy Reeves, team captain, special teams ace, certainly uh, an effective safety as well. Would love to see him come back. He recently had an appearance on the John Kime report. So if you don't listen to Kime's uh, podcast, go check that out. Always a good time here at Revo Talk. So you're definitely going to want to listen to that. Safety Terrell Burgess is a return candidate. And of course, cornerback Kendall Fuller, uh, the veteran. He's expected to get about three years, $36 million, $12 million APY, $21 million guaranteed uh, if they want to bring him back. Although I haven't really heard any rumblings of Kendall Fuller returning to the team. Cut candidates, again, I don't see anybody getting cut from this group, uh, at least not, you know, at the top end, bottom end, depending on, you know, roster moves and free agents and draft picks, all that stuff. Certainly could see some of these guys either land on the practice squad or off the team by the end of training camp. Uh, so the note, so the cap spending isn't going to change there. So we know Washington has to add to this group, right? They can't just go into the regular season with just this group alone. You need to see some players added, but are you going to see them in the top end, middle of the pack? We don't know, but we do have an idea. So if they don't re-sign Kendall Fuller or Cameron Curl, they need to sign and draft some guys. We're going to talk about some of those targets coming up next on today's episode of Locked On Commanders, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's episode of Locked On Commanders is brought to you by Robinhood. Did you know that even if you have a 401k for retirement, you can still have an IRA? Robinhood has the only IRA that gives you a 3% boost on every dollar you contribute when you subscribe to Robinhood Gold. But get this, now through April 30th, Robinhood is even boosting every single dollar you transfer in from other retirement accounts with a 3% match. That's right, no cap on the 3% match. Robinhood Gold gets you the most for your retirement thanks to their IRA with a 3% match. This offer is good through April 30th. Get started at Robinhood.com slash boost. Subscription fees apply. And now for some legal info. Claims. Uh, claim as of Q1 2024 validated by Radius Global Market Research. Investing involves risk, including loss. Limitations apply to IRAs and 401ks. 3% match requires Robinhood Gold for one year from the date of the first 3% match. Must keep Robinhood IRA for five years. The 3% match on transfers is subject to specific terms and conditions. Robinhood IRA avail available to U.S. customers in good standing. Robinhood Financial LLC, member SIPC, is a registered broker dealer. But up today's episode of Locked On Commanders, talking about the defensive backs, our offseason preview for the Washington Commanders secondary. We're also going to talk about a new Washington Commanders member signed to the team on Wednesday, coming up to wrap up today's episode. We're going to start now with free agent targets for the Washington Commanders defensive backfield. Now, again, going back to that pro football focus ranking of free agent candidates uh, previous to the franchise tag deadline. PFF had identified Jalen Johnson, the Chicago Bears cornerback, Legereus Sneed, the Kansas City Chiefs cornerback, and Kendall Fuller as the top three cornerback free agents for this year's class. Jalen Johnson and Legereus Sneed have both been, uh, been franchise tagged as of this moment. The top three safeties, Antoine Winfield Jr. of the Buccaneers, Kyle Duggar of the Patriots, and Cam Curl of the Commanders, as we spoke about before. So let's look at the top three Defensive back free agent targets that are expected to actually be available next week. And the best, I think, in this group has to be safety Xavier McKinney from the New York Giants. Now, we've already said I would I would not hate Darnell Savage coming over from the Green Bay Packers at all. But I think if you're the Washington Commanders, you got to take a long, hard look at safety or Xavier McKinney. Uh, his projected contract this free agency period, three years, $34.5 million. That's $11.5 million APY. $22 million guaranteed that matches about what Dante Jackson, the Carolina Panthers cornerback is currently on uh, with his deal. Their PFF region comp for McKinney is John Johnson in 2021 when he signed a three year, $33.7 million deal. That was about 11.25 APY. So right around the same lines, uh, Xavier McKinney, number 14 in the league in completion percentage among safeties with at least 16 targets in 2023 allowed just a 40.1 QBR rating against him. Uh, he was also sixth in tackles among safeties. One of 22 safeties have at least 54 solo tackles had a 10% miss plus broken tackle percentage, which was 13 
uh, ranked 13th out of 22 qualifying safeties. Uh, the top free agent in that category was Kyle Duggar. Duggar. Uh, so basically after Kyle, Xavier McKinney brings the best combination of pass coverage and, and tackling, and I think gives the Washington Commanders defense the maximum amount of, amount of of flexibility. And that's important here because Derek Forrest, as much as we like him, I think we see the potential in him. He is coming off of a very major injury that cost him uh, you know, 12 regular season games last season. So you don't know exactly how he's going to be able to come back this season. Because of that, you bring in a guy that, look, if he's got to replace Derek Forrest for whatever reason, he can make tackles, he can play in the box, he can play in space, and maybe you put Quan Martin back there as a free safety. If Derek Forrest comes back and he's healthy and he's strong, you put keep him back there. Xavier McKinney plays a free safety role with a little bit of box support. Quan Martin's your nickel. So gives you a little bit of flexibility there. So to me, he's the best option because he provides you really solid play at both levels. The New York Giants did place a, cer- a certain transition tag on him, but that basically just allows them to – uh, to match any offer that the New York that that Xavier McKinney draws, well, the New York Giants only have thirty eight million dollars in cap space. So for the Washington Commanders, who have almost a hundred million dollars in cap space, you come in, you make an aggressive deal, and you front load the money to make basically put the Giants in a situation where if you can match it, fine. But we're going to eat up a whole lot of your money uh, that you do have available if you do decide to match it. That's going to cost you Saquon Barkley or cost you you know whatever else. So you could put the Giants in a very precarious situation. Uh, with Xavier McKinney, but the predominant thought is Xavier wants more money than the Giants are willing to give and that the Giants think he'll get on the open market. So if that's the case, the Washington Commanders may be in a situation where if they go after him, might want to overpay just a little bit. Of course, the Giants, the problem here, the Giants, if the Commanders do make an offer, the Giants will have a certain amount of time to match that offer. And during that time, the Commanders are kind of sitting there like wondering, are we going to get our guy? Are we not going to get our guy? And that could you know, lead to some some heartache because other safeties might be coming off the market uh, while you're waiting for the Giants to make their decision. So certainly some issues there uh, to work out. But if you can get them, great addition to the team. The acceptable option, cornerback Chidobe Awuzie out of the Cincinnati Bengals program, used to play for the Dallas Cowboys as well, so you might recognize the name. Projected contract for him is two years, $20 million, $10 million APY, which is about what Stephon Gilmore is getting. PFF free agent comp is Desmond Trufant from 2020, uh, signed a $10 million APY deal as well. Awuzi was 38th out of 69 qualifying cornerbacks with a 54.8 completion percentage against. Not totally terrible, but he did allow a 106.5 QBR. Turns 29 in May. He would be a perimeter corner, so he'd be in there challenging for playing time with Emmanuel Forbes, Benjamin St. Juice, or he would be a solid option off the bench. Uh, you know, if, if that's the way that you wanted to go. The gamble here, cornerback of Dory Jackson, someone who I really liked coming out of college, really liked during his time in Tennessee. Um, he's had some injury issues and has some other issues, uh, but he is projected to have about a four-year, $17 million contract, 4.25 million APY, so very cheap, 19 uh, ranks 19th out of 24 qualifying corners with a 58.7 completion percentage against allowed a 91.6 QBR uh, turns 29 in September. So a little bit more on the risky side, but certainly more affordable. So you could take that risk a little bit easier. Looking at the NFL draft, the day one target that the Washington Commanders could consider that we haven't really talked a lot about Tyler Newbin, the safety out of Minnesota. He's kind of a back end uh, first round pick uh, projection right now. So the Washington Commanders wanted to, trade back up into the first round to get them, or if they do end up trading down and somehow getting a late first round pick out of that trade, uh, pretty much the only way I can see that happening, say the Arizona Cardinals, then perhaps he's available. Third best completion percentage allowed, 18.2% only uh, among NCAA football safeties with 11 or more targets last season and had the highest points saved estimate according to Sports Information Solutions. Day two target, I'm looking at cornerback Kamari Lasseter, out of the Georgia Bulldogs program, that's a perimeter corner that could come in and compete for playing time. Or Mike Sanders still out of Michigan, who would come in as a nickel, allow you to keep Quan Martin as a free safety. Day three targets to watch safety James Williams out of Miami, Florida, safety Omar Brown out of Nebraska, and safety Dominique Campton out of Washington. I really like the, the back-end safety class here in the NFL draft. I think you got some guys that you could – bring in and potentially develop. I don't really like the back end cornerback class. So if you're going to go corner for the Washington commanders, I think you need to do it in the first four rounds. I think rounds five, maybe you can find somebody, but round six and seven uh, is really not a lot of guys that are going to be available there, but safety, I'm not saying you're going to find a, a year one starter in the seventh round or anything like that, but certainly some guys with some upside in the fifth, sixth, seventh rounds uh, to be taken there. So, that's our cornerback offseason preview or our defensive back rather offseason preview. We got free agent targets. 
uh, NFL draft targets, guys who could come back the whole whole nine yards and a little bit of a deep conversation about Cam Curl uh, and what he might be looking for on the open market. And, you know, I don't know what he's asking for to the Washington Commanders. I don't know if that's the hang up. So, you know, don't read too much into a whole lot of other things. Uh, Cam Curl certainly has been active on social media lately, of course, creating a stir, creating some buzz. You know, who knows what the motivation behind that is. His father obviously has been uh, active on social media as well. So, but again, you know, I wouldn't read too much into it unless you know something. I wouldn't read too much into it. And we just kind of take it as it comes at the end of the day. We're not in the negotiating room. So even if we want to read too much into it, uh, it's not really going to have an impact on the outcome, right? Uh, something that is done, though, a done deal. The Washington Commanders did get done on Wednesday. Zach Ertz has agreed to sign with the Washington Commanders for one year. It's a $5 million deal, according to Tom Pelissero of NFL Network. Uh, Zach Ertz is now going to rejoin Cliff Kingsbury. Cliff Kingsbury, the head coach of the Arizona Cardinals, for a time period, Zach Ertz was there. As the tight end, their their two years in Arizona together, Ertz had over 100 catches and nearly a thousand yards of production in 21 total games under Kingsbury in Arizona. Uh, so again, I don't know the, the particulars of that deal. I don't know how much of that is guaranteed, how much of that is incentive based. Uh, you know, Zach Ertz certainly one of the best names uh, in NFL history at the tight end position. Not going to go as far as say he's like the greatest tight end to ever play, uh, but certainly has carved out a really nice niche for himself uh, in, in NFL history. I think, and you know, one of the earlier. Uh, kind of receiving tight ends, right? Not a super great blocker uh, late in his career, you know, but, you know, certainly a serviceable player at a minimum uh, is going to be a veteran that comes in kind of like Andrew Wiley last year. You kind of look at him and say, okay, he's going to come in and at least help the uh, to help the offense understand Cliff's language a little bit and where he's coming from a little bit and kind of help Coach Kingsbury have an advocate uh, in the locker room with Zach Ertz there. So at, at a minimum, you're going to get that qualify, qual- qualification, that benefit. I don't think this necessarily precludes Washington from going after another free agent tight end or even going after drafting a tight end early. I don't think Zach Ertz comes in and is just your slam dunk number one tight end necessarily. We'll see how he is physically. It's been a little while since we've really seen him on the field uh, consistently. Uh, he ended up losing his starting job to Trey McBride in Arizona last year before the Cardinals ultimately uh, decided to release him. It, it was a mutual you know, departure. Uh, but according to the reports, and then Zach Ertz ended up last that I knew was on the practice squad with the Detroit Lions, which is why he was available to sign now, not having to wait last year because practice squads contracts expire as soon as the team season is over, whereas active contracts expire at the end of the league year, uh, which would be March 15th. So that's why Zach Ertz was available. Um, you know, so look, so certainly excited about the move, certainly some potential there, but I just wouldn't I wouldn't necessarily go too, too far off the deep end. Uh, with with expectations for Zach Ertz at this stage in his career, but again, uh, you know, never put it past him. A lot of, a lot of his struggles that that were uh, happening in Arizona his last season were were chalked up to some injuries. But so was certainly banged up and carrying some things. So now if he's healthier, uh, perhaps he could have a little bit of revitalization in Cliff Kingsbury's uh, system. Uh, more of a receiver again than a blocker, but certainly a veteran presence in the locker room that Logan Thomas is, is you know, now that he's gone, they're going to be missing that. So they're going to get that back with Zach Ertz a little bit, uh, getting to uh, or uh, looking forward to getting to know him just a little bit as well. So coming up tomorrow, we're going to finish our offensive position group previews for the offseason with running backs and tight ends. We're going to combine them. So good timing for Zach Ertz. We'll certainly be talking about him again. Uh, and then our final position group defensive line is going to come on Monday. Uh, That's going to include your interior and your edge rushers, but we're going to have a mailbag on Friday sandwiched in between. So if you got questions for the mailbag, drop them into the YouTube comments or text me directly as a Locked On Commanders insider at joinsubtext.com slash Locked On Commanders. Don't forget to check out Locked On Sports Today, the first ever 24-7 live streaming sports channel on YouTube. And as always, thank you so much for making Locked On Commanders your first listen of the day every day. Every day, thank you for coming through on a regular basis like you do. Until we speak again, if you're out about, please be safe, be kind, and I'll see you next time for another episode of Locked On Commanders, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day.